What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Buy Sell Cars TV. Today we have got this Ford Galaxy behind me. It's a 1.9 TDI automatic. I'm sure a lot of you know, but super bulletproof car. A lot of practicality, big reliability and good value for money. So I thought I'm gonna make a video on this car. Not something which you see every day, but more importantly, there are some issues we are gonna to need to address. So without further ado, let me give you a walk around of this car and let's show you what we're working with on this Ford Galaxy. So starting on the exterior, the car obviously needs a good old clean. You can see probably hasn't been cleaned in a little while. Wheels, a lot of dust, bumper, everything. It's all over the place at the moment. It is an old car. This is a car which would get used. It's a family vehicle, so you can't expect it to be in pristine condition necessarily. Now over on this side, we can see straight away we've got a lot of little scratches across over here. Bit of a dent at that point over there. And just generally, if we look at the panels, you can see little scratches, little knocks from maybe car park dinks, etc. It's on 120,000 miles. You're going to expect to see these things. Moving around the rear, what have we got? So, bonus point, we've got parking sensors. Now, I don't know if that's actually a standard option on these, but whether it is or not, nice option to see on that. And that is on the front and rear as well. Got some residue over here, which I'll probably try get the valeters to take off. We're missing the Ford badge as well, so it's just a cosmetic thing, but another point just to mention. Over on the corner of the rear bumper, on a big car like this, you're going to expect to see things like this. Little scuffs in, on the bumper. Over here as well, we've got a bit of a deeper one there. Around the passenger side, how are we looking? It's probably looking a little bit better than the other side, but over again, we have got a bit of a scratch here. I think we'll be able to polish some of that out, to be honest. Not necessarily all of it, but half of that does look like it's not too deep. So. I'll see if we can do something about that. Two other things which I just noticed over here. So the wing over here is a bit dented. It's kind of sort of blended into the uh, shape of the panel, but there is a crease for sure in that. A little bit of paint's gone over there as well. And it's just started to rust on the edge. So not something which is uh, too concerning at the moment. Bumper has definitely been painted before, as you can see, started to flake away a little bit. I did actually pick up on that when I was standing further away, but I guess you can see it's just had a bit of a cheap smart repairs on this side because over here as well you can see the same thing is going on the paint is starting to flake away but it's all cosmetic stuff this is about a practical car automatic diesel and seven seats as well so a lot of practicality to do with this car so that's the exterior let me show you the interior so having a look at the interior it's not necessarily too bad but it definitely is a car which has been used, you know, especially you can see across here, things like this are very common on these cars, but it doesn't stop the functionality. Down over here, we haven't got any mats, so carpet is very, very dirty. But again, not a concerning thing. We can get all that rectified from a valet. Steering wheel has got a cover on it, so it probably means it's got a bit of wear underneath there. Condition of this wheel cover isn't too bad, so that's doing its job. How are we looking on the seats? So you can see a lot of stains on them. Condition-wise, they're pretty good, not a crazy amount of wear bit on the bolster but I guess it's expected for that sort of mileage same over on this side as well it's just got a lot of stains on there oh that gets used you're going to expect to see these things carpet on this side looks like there has been a mat in there at some point so maybe there will be some in the boot the door card over here is starting to peel away that is something which does happen as cars get on a bit you tend to see that sort of stuff more on the headlining on cars but this one is looking perfectly fine which is good news. Nice automatic gearbox down here, air conditioning, CD player, all the usual shebang. Two drinks holders, do they still work? Yeah, well, they do work, so that one is a bit sticky, but needs to just be cleaned up and get all that grime out and they'll be working as good. So front's looking pretty good. Let me show you the rears. So looking at the rears, they're very, very similar to the front in that respect. You can see the condition is pretty good, but just a lot of dirt and grime especially down here you can see it's all gone to the uh, the gaps down there but nothing that the valet boys won't be able to sort out for us and make look like new carpet down over here as well so we're missing the mats but again not end of the world we'll be able to bring that up to a good standard nice thing about these cars as well picnic tables very very nice practical family car these a lot of space around the back as well especially down the center as it's completely flat very very nice show you behind as well being a seven seater so that should just fold down little lever down here there we go and the last two seats at the back are looking the same as well. So you can see some stainage over there in the corners and the same sort of over here. Not necessarily as bad, but 
the whole car is going to need a deep deep clean but i'm still quite happy to be honest and i think in the boot we can see there are some potential carpets i think we can see some carpets yeah so we can get those cleaned as well to fill in the gaps over at the front but hopefully that gives you an idea of how this car is looking on the interior and the exterior so as i said earlier the car does have some issues with the suspension which we are going to have to address there's a bit of a creaking noise but you can't really pick it up on the camera so what i'm going to do is get the car now take it over to the mechanics let them investigate and fix that matter i think the battery is definitely on its way out so it might need to get that replaced as well but i'll let you know exactly what that is going to be so we're going to get it dropped off there let them fix the car then we'll drop it off to the valeters pick up this video take this car for a drive and see how we're doing with this ford galaxy and more importantly we'll get into the numbers and talk about how much this car has cost to get it ready for sale so stay tuned guys Okay, so we've got the car back, ready from the valeters, ready from the mechanics and ready to be retailed. So let me give you a walk around of the exterior and just show you how the car is looking after it's been cleaned. The tire shine has dried up a little bit, so I probably need to top that up, but you can see the paintwork has now got a nice bit of shine to it compared to what it was like before. Most of the work was needed on the interior, which you're gonna see in a second, but it's always still nice to see how the car is gonna be looking to the customer after it has been cleaned. And even just the most basic of just washing a car from the exterior, makes a big, big difference when someone is coming to view a car. It's all about first impressions and the car is looking a lot nicer than how it was before. We still obviously got the scuffs on the bumpers, etc. Like I said, it's a family car. It's a car which gets used. The person who is probably buying this is not gonna be as fussed about the cosmetic sides of things because this car is all about the practicality. Seven seats, automatic diesel car. So if you're not in London, you'd probably be good with one of these. But that gives you an idea of how things are looking after the car's been cleaned. Let me show you the interior because that's where things get really nice and there's the transformation to show. All right, how do we think the interior is looking compared to what it was like previously? I think it's had a big, big change, especially around the carpet. You can see it looks a lot more new and it smells really fresh in here. I'd say a good 90% of all the stains on the seats have gone. The camera picks things up a lot better than the naked eye, I must say, but the car is definitely looking a lot better than how it was before. Condition of the seats as well, as you can see, are fantastic. Even down on this side, the carpet is looking very, very nice. We have got mats for the car as well. I've just left them outside to drive because we don't want any dampness left in the car. But gives you a nice idea of how it's looking compared to before. And it's money that is well spent. But that's only a small portion of the car. Let's show you the other five seats. Right, going into the midsection of the car, shall I say. We've got a little bit of sun shining, which is going to impact the way the car is looking, but you get an idea of how things are looking. You know, the carpet down here is looking absolutely fantastic. Very nice quality, I must say, as well. It's got a nice little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a bit of like a velour sort of look to it. I don't really know what I'm saying, but looks very, very nice. The actual seats themselves, so you can see the condition is great, especially now they've been cleaned. It really helps bring them up to show how well they've kept up for all of these years. Even the back side of the seats as well, all looking nice and clean, no rips or tears. So getting a valet done to this car is making a big, big difference and it's only enhancing the way it looks. Let me show you the back two seats. Right, the final two seats in the rear making is a seven. Probably get used the least, I'm gonna say. They are in fantastic condition. Same over here as well, carpet, it is looking very, very good. Of course, when the car has mat, it's gonna prolong the life and make things better with the carpet underneath. Even still, the interior on this car shows you how if you look after a car, don't abuse it, and just give it to the valeters to let them work their magic, it makes a big, big difference. So now that the car has been mechanically checked, looked over and fixed, it's time to take for a drive and talk about how much has this car cost to bring it up to this standard, and what were those issues we faced getting this car prepped? But I must say, for a big old bus and something which is 18 years old, done 124,000 miles, this car actually drives really nice. The engine, bulletproof, I'm sure a lot of you know about these 1.9 TDIs, absolutely bulletproof engines. The gearbox, everything's changing smooth. 
Now that we've had a couple of those issues fixed, the car is driving very, very nice. Because as I mentioned before, the suspension was all over the place. It was making a horrible creaking, crashing noise when you were driving it. So that was something which had to get addressed. But we'll come on to that in a second. But why did I buy this car? And you know, why was this car even in auction? What is it that stands out for me wanting to buy this car? They're all good points to talk about. So the reason I bought this car is because it's a 1.9 bulletproof TDI engine. It's an automatic car. And more importantly, it's a seven seater. And there's not actually a lot of these old Ford Galaxies left on the market for sale. If you have a look now, there's probably three or four of them, diesels and automatic for sale. And in my opinion, these are actually better cars than the newer one, which came out after. And at the price point as well, for what these cars are, anywhere between 1,500 and two and a half grand, depending on mileage, etc. They represent a lot of good value. You know, it's a big, big family car. It's almost like a van to some extent. You know, a lot of delivery drivers can use these as like a small van if they needed to. The seats literally come out of the car. So it, it can become a van effectively, as well as being seven seater. So there's a lot of good points going for these types of cars. Now, I know it's not you, Les, and that's kind of coming on to the next point why I think this car actually came available into the auction. So the car has barely been driven in the last year. Now, upon me getting the car, I looked at the logbook and I could see that the person who had this car lived in London area within the ULES charge zone. So it was in long-term ownership. They had this car since I think 2012 or around that sort of time, but generally either way it was in long-term ownership. So the fact that the car had not done much mileage since I'm gonna say summer 2023, which is when the ULES charge zone actually expanded because before it used to be more just in central London. Now it's anywhere within the M25. It makes sense that this car stopped being driven because there's a daily charge to be driving the car. I think it's like 12, 50 or 15 pounds. So in a month, if you're daily driving a car, that's a big, big expense. So makes sense why this car hadn't done a lot of mileage. It wasn't too concerning. You know, there's no alarm bells there because there is a genuine reason of why I think the car was not used. So wasn't worried about that. So. That's a bit of an understanding of why I wanted to buy this car and probably why this car was put into the auction. Now, let's talk about getting this car ready for sale. I'm sure you saw earlier on how the car was looking. It wasn't terrible, but equally things like the interior was a bit neglected, a lot of dust and just grime generally. Not terrible, but needed some work. So that was one of the things which needed doing. The second thing was the suspension sounded absolutely horrendous. It, it almost borderline didn't feel safe the way the car was making noises. So I knew straight away I'm gonna have to get things like that addressed as well as the car needing an MOT. So three things straight away from getting the car I knew I'm gonna have to get addressed. So got the car taken over to the mechanics and the first thing I got addressed was getting it put through an MOT because as well as the issue with the suspension, if there are any failures, I'm gonna to need to get those addressed at the same time. So it just makes sense. Do the MOT first, it's the cheapest thing. You're gonna find out, is this car worth repairing or is it better just to cut your losses? So got it MOT straight away and the car did pass. Has a couple of advisories, but it's all relative to the age and mileage of the car. Small things, dust covers, uh, rear discs are a little bit pitted, I think it was. One of the tires is, I think it was either low or perished. Maybe that's something I could throw into the deal when the car sells. But the main thing is the car is roadworthy, got 12 months MOT on there. So that was the first thing which we got done. The suspension issue is where things get a bit strange. So initially the mechanic couldn't find where this noise is coming from. And then upon further inspection, what he noticed was it looked like on the top of the strut where some of the bolts sit, that someone has tried to replace something in the past and the bolts have snapped and they've just left it and given up. And where this car hasn't been driven, that maybe adds to the picture of they just sort of just left it parked up and thought, you know, it, will, it is what it is at the moment, the car's not being driven. So the bolts effectively snapped on the strut, so there was a lot of movement. So it wasn't even safe to drive to some extent. And I was glad that they were able to get this issue sorted. And it was a bit of a, a headache, it took a couple of hours of labor to get it done, but main thing is it's sorted now and you can hear on the drive there is no creaks or crunches coming from the suspension. So once I picked up the car from the mechanics, I took it straight over to the valeters and I told them, work their magic, do what you gotta do, make this car look as good as possible because first impressions are always an important thing. And what I find when I sell cars to my customers, even when the car's got poor bodywork, 
one of the things they always say is how clean and well looked after the interior looks. And half of that is just from getting the valet done because it really just helps make that car look as new as possible. You know, seeing a 20 year old car that's been deep clean and valeted isn't something you see every day. So it makes a big difference when you're coming to sell these cars and it's well worth the money. So how much did I have to spend to get this car ready for sale? In all honesty, not actually a lot of money. We'll keep it short and simple. So getting the car emitted, 40 pounds. Getting the car valeted was 60 pounds. And getting the issue off the strut bolts where they were broken and getting all that fixed, it was an hour and a half labor plus some parts. So that ended up costing me around, I think it was just under 150 pounds to get that issue fixed. So all in all, getting this car prepped approximately has cost 240 pounds. Now I did pay top money for this car. I did pay top money. I ended up paying approximately, I think it was 725 pound hammer. So about a thousand pound I paid for this car approximately. I will pop on the screen to let you know exactly how much I did pay. But like I say, it's a car which I think is very, very practical, very good and should sell relatively quick. I know it's not good for people in London, but there still is a demand for these cars. So I'd like to hopefully think that it will sell quick. That's why I did sort of pay top money for this car. How much can I sell this type of car for? Realistically, I think this car will sell around a 2000 pound mark. It could be a touch more, maybe a touch less. So in terms of profit in this car, there still is a very, very good healthy profit to be made. Maybe not so much as the some of the cars I've done in previous videos, but equally, it's a completely different type of car. It's a different market. It might be a quicker sale. A lot of factors to take into consideration. So that gives you an idea of you know where I'm going to be in terms of the profit on this car when it does sell. But just wanted to bring that to you on this channel, show you getting this car prepped, needed some work, bring it up to a nice standard to get it ready for retail and just talking about some of those numbers so you get a good transparent idea of how much these types of cars cost running into some small issues, getting them rectified, what type of margin is in the car. So hopefully that's come through on today's video. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. Don't forget to also follow me on my Instagram and TikTok, which is at Buy Sell Cars TV. But other than that, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'm going to see you on the next one. Take care, guys.